Hey guys, Jim here. Here for a very, very exciting video. Something that uh, a lot of you have been very anxious for me to upload and I apologize it's taken so long. I've been posting pictures for a little over a week on my Instagram having this knife. It snuck into one of my ramble videos and my inbox exploded. So it's time for me to finally get down and dirty and do this video. Now, uh, I'm going to do this in two parts. And there's probably going to be about two weeks between the episodes, and I'm going to tell you why. Because I had a conversation with Stan today uh, about this knife and about the incredible ingenuity that went into the engineering of it. And I said, listen, the, the systems that you've employed here, I, I think it's amazing that you're sharing with everybody how it's done. And you, you've, you've taken pictures for me to use for my review and to show all the internal components and how it was all put together. I said, I'm going to be honest with you, though. When you come up with something this revolutionary, everybody's going to want to copy it. And it's not really about, you know, individual knife makers, you know, knocking it off or whatever. That would be bad enough. I mean, the big, big corporations that have millions of dollars to throw into R&D, I would hate to see that happen. So I'm not going to reveal everything about how this knife operates until the second follow-up video uh, after uh, Stan and I have talked about that once again. So we're going to do is we're going to talk about the knife, how amazing it is, uh, the, the quality of the build. I mean, it's a Stan Wilson, but you have to keep in mind that, you know, your typical Stan Wilson, uh, when you're looking at something like the double action version of his advisor, you know, things in that league, they're going to be running you about twice as much as this one does. So you've got to think to yourself, well, if I'm paying roughly 40 to 50 percent less, am I really making any sacrifices? Well, honestly, yes and no. You're not making a sacrifice in the quality and the fit and finish, but you're not going to get an entire knife done in Damascus and, and all the same kind of fittings that are that are done in one of his $4,500 or $5,000 or, or more expensive knives. But what you are getting is the same degree of quality, the same fitment of the components that you have. Sure, this may not be all Damascus. You know, it's a standard titanium bolster with titanium frames and carbon fiber for the scales. No hidden hardware. And really, and somebody actually brought this up on Instagram. He's like, oh, it'd be so much better if you had a hidden pivot. There's no way to do a hidden pivot with, with the system that's being employed here. Because what makes this knife unique is this is a flipper without a flipper tab. So if you're going to make a flipper that doesn't have a flipper tab, you've got to have a way to kick the knife out. That's accomplished through this bolster. The unlocking is accomplished through this bolster. Now I realize I'm doing this fast, so you really can't tell what's going on, but I will slow it down here in a moment and give you an idea of what's really going on. This is the non-flipper flipper. I like to call it the bolster flipper. It rolls off the tongue a little bit nicer, and it gives you a better idea of what's really going on. So instead of having a standard bolstered knife like my Turp and Strife, they have a very similar look to their construction, being the fact that more than two-thirds of the knife covered with a carbon fiber scale, supported with titanium, and the pivot end has titanium for the bolsters. But this is your standard flipper. Nothing wrong with that. That's how all flippers operate. Nice and fast. He makes a crazy smooth knife. This is one of the most fantastic quality knives money can buy. However, this is something a bit more unique. When you pull this out and you do that, it blows people's minds. And the sound, oh, the sound is amazing. Because you hear a three-step, you hear the disengaging, then you hear the lockup, then you hear me releasing the bolster. Here's what's happening. I'm flipping by pulling back on that bolster. I'm unlocking by simply doing a light pivot on that bolster. So what you're getting are two pivoting bolsters. One pivots a lot more than the other. Let's try and get this open nice and slow. By the way, it's important to mention that this is not an automatic. This is not a spring-driven system. The only spring that's in here is the return spring for that bolster. So what I'm doing every time I go to flip my blade, 
I'm simply pulling down on this corner of the bolster. And it rotates around the pivot. And what it's doing, see if we can get it to, there we go. Now I want you to look inside. I've still got the bolster held. Now you're seeing how the blade is deployed because there is a post in there that engages the blade and kicks it out. You're also going to see that your detent ball is on the bottom side of the blade because it's actually engaging right here. Let me open that back up. Now the detent has engaged. Now when we go to unlock the knife, all we're doing is we're twisting the, the pivot this way. But it takes a very, very small movement to get it to do that. Now what I also do is I allow my finger to rest partially on the spine of the blade, so I'm actually giving it a little push as well. And when you get the timing right, it'll completely close and lock into place without you having to, to close the blade with your finger. Locks right into place. Now, what this is doing is it's really just engaging a very simple backlock system. And I say simple because, I mean, you think back to your old, your old buck knives and whatever. You know, you had a simple mid-lock or back-lock on them. This is actually probably more, maybe considered more of a mid-lock. And you're actually going to see, and it's very hard to see because Stan blends his material so well. But there's a little separation there. This is actually your backspacer. And this is going to be your backlock or mid-lock, whatever you want to call it. Now, you'll notice there's a sandwich of materials here. And it's all perfectly smooth. You don't feel a difference between the bolsters and the carbon fiber, or the bolsters and the frame liners, and the lock. It's all like one solid material. To make that even more impressive, you know, I, I have to compare it to uh, Frank Fisher's battle, because I've said that this is my hands down number one favorite knife, period. And this was the first knife that I've ever owned that I could truly say, one knife to rule them all. And Frank learned a lot of things from Stan because they're, they're longtime friends because of Stan's next door neighbor, Todd Fisher, who was Frank Fisher's father. So there's a whole, whole little family of Central Florida knife makers right there. I only need a couple more to fill it. I need a Reese Whelan on this side, and I need a Neil Blackwood on this side, and I'm good. But one of the things that, uh, that Frank picked up from, from his father and from Stan is a way of integrating all the components completely seamlessly. You don't feel anything. Now, while that is a serious mega achievement, that bolster don't move. Both of these bolsters pivot. So you're getting all these moving parts almost seamlessly into the build of the knife. And this is what separates the guys that make $500 knives from the guys that make five, seven, eight, ten plus thousand dollar knives. It's in the quality of the build, it's in the fit and finish, the very, very fine details, and in the ingenuity. There are not many guys out there right now that can say, yeah, I created my, my a new locking system. It just doesn't happen, man. This is incredible. So let me show you again, up close, what this bolster is doing. So when I'm tilting this and pivoting this, I want you to keep your eyes right here. Let's see if I can do this on camera without cutting myself. Now you see that that lock is being lifted. I'm trying to find the best finger hold so you can see everything. There we go. So you can see I'm actually lifting that lock. The pivot for that lock is somewhere back here. I think I can even do it when the blade is closed. Yes. Okay. So we can see it then separating right there. As that's dipping down, this is lifting up. Your detent hole is in there as well. So holding it open and closed, I'm sorry, holding it closed would be that detent. 
with the lock completely engaging. I don't know if we can really see how it engages. But this lock is going to engage deep into the back side of the blade. Right in there, there's like a notch. And it's going to go over this, and it's going to drop down into place. That is one of the most solid locks money can buy, period. It's just being disengaged in a different way than we're used to seeing. All right, so you've got a three and three quarter inch blade. Uh, it can be measured four inches if you start at the top of the bolster. It's three and uh, almost four inches. Uh, it's only it's, a, it's between three and a half and three and three quarter from this side. It's about eight and a half inches overall length, so it's not a huge knife, but it's also not a small knife either. Put it up next to the battle. Now again, my battle was the custom size. Mine was the uh, three and three quarter inch blade variation, not his smaller size battle. That would be more along the size of the Archangel. So putting all three of these guys side by side, there you see your size differences. Um, putting up next to other bolstered knives that I have a particular love for, as you can see. And I'm really, I mean, this is, this is like a showcase of my favorite knives from my favorite makers. Elliot Williamson, uh, Predium, because this was really custom, up against Dan Wilson, up against uh, Frank Fisher and Todd Fisher, and then Dustin Turpin with the Strife. That should be really close in size to the Strife, I would think. Boy, that is damn near identical. It's just a little T9C bit longer than the Wilson. The ergonomics on this thing are surprising because what I kind of expected was a thick, thick knife like my battle and like the double action advisor. The advisor is not a, a super skinny knife from my recollection of holding it. And if you're wondering about what I'm talking about, please go back in my channel. If you haven't already seen this video, you're like one of like eight people that have it. Stop this video right now and just search my channel for the name Stan Wilson. You're going to see where I visited Stan in his shop, brought my camera in there, and he broke apart one of his amazing knives and showed you what goes into the making, or a small glimpse, I should say, into the making of an incredible knife. And you'll see why I have uh, so much respect for, for Stan and the work that he does. So this is actually very, very slim. It is slimmer than my Strife. Not by a lot, but it feels more in the hand. And it's very, very comparable to my Pretium. My Pretium only being a little bit slimmer. But the way it handles, it's fantastic. If you're wondering, oh, your ring, your ring's going to scratch. I don't care. I've already got scratches in my bolsters, a couple little marks in my blade. I don't care. I bought this to carry. I bought this to use and be a daily companion. And I've already got the marks on it, and that's totally fine by me. Of course, they're probably not going to show up on camera now that I say that. But I don't care. Love this knife. There it is, a couple little marks. Love the clip on this, too, because if you take a look, it follows the shape of the frame perfectly. It is the exact same curvature, exact same angle. It is dead on perfect in every way. Give you a look at the tolerances here. The first thing you're going to want to know is, well, how does the bolster fit up against the carbon fiber? How tight does that fit? It's really, really tight. Look at the tolerances in here. Look how everything is just sandwiched together. This is very, very, very smooth, almost undetectable jump between the materials. Back here, there is, it's completely undetectable. You don't feel a difference. Here's the part that I love to look at the most, though. As a matter of fact, we'll turn it this way. Now you can see where the blade starts to taper and narrow. You got a little room in there. We get up here. There is no room. Those tolerances are so ridiculously tight. It's almost, you almost can't fathom that that blade will actually fit between those titanium frames. It is that tight. And then you look at the way that all of this was done. Perfect matching all the way around. He has jeweled the liners inside 
and right back here you will see his name um, he's a pretty modest dude man he doesn't really like to just shout his name out I'm gonna move my light here so we can see it a little bit better there we go Stan Wilson he doesn't want to mark up his blades or his frames or anything by putting his name on it. He figures, if you really want to know who made it, you'll look inside. Now, you'll see a little screw back there in the backspacer. What that allows me as the owner to do is very, very tiny adjustments. I could take a Torx T5 and just barely turn it, and I can adjust the strength of my detent and the pressure of this lock. Because what it's doing, and again, I'm not going to get into really crazy full details, that's adjusting the pressure of that lock. So if I want to make this easier to disengage and lighter on the flipper, I can do that by backing off a little bit. I tighten it back down, and it's going to make it flip out even faster. I mean, I've tightened it down just to play with it, and it was one of the fastest flippers I had ever handled. It was like a rocket. It was insane. Let me show you again. I don't know if I've never done it with my left hand. Let me see if I can show you here the entire action it's just it's just brilliant just brilliant I'm almost without words I feel very fortunate to own this knife uh, obviously uh, as you see in the title there were not very many made before mine I had actually seen the gentleman who's a friend of Stan uh, that received the prototype he had made a post on a forum and he posted up a quick video here on YouTube. There was nothing, uh, there was no explanations of the knife. It was just very simply, this is what it does. Check out how cool it is. And I went, oh shit. And Stan will tell you that the very day that that hit and I saw it, I emailed him right away. I said, I don't know if you ever plan on making another one, but if you do, I want one. And he emailed me back a couple hours later, because he's a night owl like I am. And he says, yeah, I've been getting a few people that, uh, that seem to be interested in it, so I think I'm going to make a few of them. He says, if you want, I'll put you on the list. I said, uh, shit, yeah, with a capital S. And I, was, I didn't even know when it was going to get made. I didn't ask how much it was. I did not care. And that's not like me. And then he, uh, he shot me an email about two weeks ago. He says, oh, by the way, uh, you know, the knife's, uh, the knife's done. And uh, if you want it, I'm, I'm, really, I'm happy to sell it to you and get it all done with. I'm like, shit, yeah, by the way, how much is it? <laughs> and I had a quick little fire sale because uh, I had already depleted my play money for that week. So I did a little quick fire sale. And um, about five or six hours later, I paid him for the knife. And I started getting excited right away. Now, one of the things that you might not expect, if you know Stan Wilson and you've seen his other knives, aside from his one tactical folder, this is a very basic look for him. There's nothing ornate except for the jeweling inside of the liners. You've got a beautiful blasted titanium bolster set up, nice clean carbon fiber. And then the blade, it's all blasted, tumbled, and then he's done a light wheel buff on the flats, just to give you a little bit of a two-tone. Not anywhere near a mirror, not quite as fine as satin. He says, I just you know, pushed up against the wheel for a couple seconds, and boom, look at that! <laughs> it makes it sound so simple, even though it's really not. Love the ergos. It feels great in the hand. Uh, it's got a nice, it's got a very short handle for the size of the knife. You would expect the handle to be a little bit longer, but it's not. It just, it fits nicely. Nice big choil up front here. You can actually uh, drop about two fingers in there. The way he's pulled his harpoon way back here, it actually works as a thumb ramp. And it's actually really, really comfortable. It's not very sharp back here, so you can actually choke up on it if you want to. And have a little bit more precision cutting there if you want. All the way around, it's just a nice balance. Great look. Has more of a, a tactical, everyday carry kind of feel to it. It doesn't look and feel like a dress knife or an art knife like you might typically expect. Now, why did he make this the way that he did? Stan doesn't like flippers. And it's funny because all of his friends make flippers. And he says, you know what? I don't want to ruin the lines of my knife by a big old tab sticking out, either in the closed or open position. I don't need it. It's just not my style. He's not going to knock anybody else that does it, obviously. Um, but it's just not his style. 
He feels it takes away from his design. So his challenge was, when he was talked into making a flipper, because he didn't understand why people love flippers, was how do I make a flipper that doesn't have a flipper tab? Well, my friends, he figured it out. And he did it in typical Stan Wilson style, where when you first pick up the knife, you have no idea how the hell to open it <laughs> or close it. And that's the beauty of his work. It's almost like he's a magician with these materials. And I feel very honored to own one of my collection. All right, guys, I'm going to get out of here for now. Part two will be coming later once Stan and I have talked again about how to go about doing that. And if all goes well, I will be able to demystify this amazing knife. I'll see you then.